Electromagnetic wave propagation in a conductor. Electromagnetic waves propagate much differently in conductors than they do in dielectrics or in vacuum. If the resistivity of the conductor is sufficiently low, that is, if it is a sufficiently good conductor, the oscillating electric field of the wave gives rise to an oscillating conduction current that is much larger than the displacement current. In this case, the wave equation for an electric field Ey x of t, x as a function of x and t in j hat propagating in the plus x direction within a conductor is del square Ey del x square is mu over rho del Ey del t where mu is the permeability of the conductor and rho is its resistivity. Part A. A solution to this wave equation is Ey as a function of x and t is E max e to the minus kcx cosine kcx minus omega t, where kc square root omega mu over 2 rho. Verify this by substituting the Ey of x and t into the above wave equation. So that's our first task. So let's rewrite the wave equation for propagation of electromagnetic waves in a conductor. Del square Ey x and t del x square is equal to mu over rho permeability in the conductor mu divided by its resistivity rho del Ey x and t del t suggested solution to this is Ey x and t is equal to amplitude E max exponential minus k sub c x cosine k sub c x minus omega t. That's the suggested solution. So I need to take two derivatives with respect to x del Ey del x. So from the exponential term, I will obtain a minus kc e to the minus kc x. So this is going to be minus e max kc e to the minus kc x cosine kc x minus omega t and then I have the derivative of the cosine that gives me a minus sine kcx minus omega t and another factor of kc so then I will have minus e max kc e to the minus kcx sine kcx minus omega t that's the first derivative and I note here that kc square is omega mu divided by 2 rho. So this, this is basically what is given here. kc square is omega mu over 2 rho. Okay, so now I need the second derivative. del square ey del x square this is equal to so i will have four terms here the first term will be minus kc multiplied by minus kc e max k square exponential and cosine so let's write that down e max kc square exponential minus kcx cosine kcx minus omega t. Then I have to take the derivative of the cosine. I will obtain a minus sine uh, kcx minus omega t with another kc here. So that's the second term. 
plus E max KC square E to the minus KCX sine KCX minus omega T. And now I go to the second term. Minus KC minus KC plus KC square sine. So this term is plus E max KC square exponential minus KCX sine KCX minus omega T. And as for the last term, I have the derivative of sine giving me cosine and Kc with a minus sign here. So this is going to give me minus E max Kc square exponential minus Kcx cosine Kcx minus omega t. Now you can see that this first term here and the last term here are identical with opposite signs, so they will cancel out. So this term will disappear, this term will disappear, so they're going to cancel out. So I can rewrite the second derivative of EY with respect to X. second derivative of EY with respect to X is, so I'm getting twice this term, twice this term, uh, E max KC square is omega mu divided by 2 rho twice e to the minus kcx sine kcx minus omega t. The factor of 2 here cancels out as well. And now if I write the time derivative del ey del t, the second part of the equation, uh, the time derivative will give me uh, minus omega here. Cosine will turn into uh, a sine, minus sine. So minus sine minus omega becomes plus. So this is going to be plus, plus omega e max e to the minus kcx sine kcx minus omega t. So the equation says mu over rho times del ey del t. So let's do that. What is mu over rho times del ey del t? Mu over rho omega mu over rho del ey del t is mu times omega e max over rho mu omega e max over rho e to the minus kcx sine kcx minus omega t. So here is the answer mu over rho del ey del t. And here is the second derivative of ey with respect to x, e max 
omega mu or mu omega over rho e to the minus kcx sine kx kcx minus omega t. So comparing these two, uh, I see that they are the same. So these two are the same. Therefore, I conclude that this is a solution. Part B, the ex exponential term shows that the electric field decreases in amplitude as it propagates. Explain why this happens. Hint, the field does work to move charges within the conductor. The current of these moving charges causes I square R heating within the conductor, raising its temperature. Where does the energy to do this come from? Well, the energy in the electromagnetic wave is dissipated dissipated by the resistance per second as I square R. So the exponential term comes from the fact that the energy is being dissipated by the resistance in the wire. So therefore, the amplitude of the electromagnetic wave keeps decreasing. Part C show that the electric field amplitude decreases by a factor of 1 over e in a distance 1 over kc square root 2 rho over omega mu and calculate this distance for a radio wave with frequency 1 megahertz in copper resistivity 1.72 10 to minus 8 ohm meter permeability mu is equal to mu zero since this distance is so short, electromagnetic waves of this frequency can hardly propagate at all into copper. Instead, they are reflected at the surface of the metal. This is why radio waves cannot penetrate through copper or other metals and why radio reception is poor inside a metal surface. So, the amplitude is E max e to the minus kc over x and we want this to be e max over e so it, it has to decrease by a factor of Euler's number e so this tells us that e to the minus kc over x should be equal to exponential minus 1 e to minus 1 so that means kc over x ratio should be equal to 1 or x should be equal to 1 over kc 1 over kc as suggested in the problem statement now what is this x for copper x is equal to 2 rho divided by omega mu square root. This is 2 times the resistivity of copper, 1.72, 10 to minus 8 ohm meter, divided by omega angular frequency, 2 pi times f, 1 times 10 to 6 hertz. That was the given frequency. 1 megahertz um, and then we have permeability of free space 4 pi 10 to minus 7 so if we take the square root of this we're going to obtain x is equal to the penetration depth is 6.60 times 10 to minus 5 meters and I can see that x varies as 1 over square root of the frequency. Okay, so this is basically telling me that the lower the lower the frequency of the electromagnetic wave, the more penetration into the metal the more will be the penetration 
Okay, so in this problem, first we have shown that electromagnetic waves propagating in a conductor obey this equation where the solution is given by E max e to the minus kcx cosine kcx minus omega t. We take two derivatives with respect to x and then we take a derivative with respect to time and multiply it by mu over rho. We see that this is equal to, when I multiply with mu over rho, so here I have to make sure that there is no confusion. Okay. So mu over rho del ey del t is uh, equal to the second derivative as we have shown. So this is indeed a solution of the uh, wave equation inside the conductor. The exponential term basically dictates that the amplitude of the electromagnetic wave decreases exponentially with distance inside the conductor. That means energy is being dissipated by the resistance of the conductor per second as I square R. And that penetration depth, the characteristic length scale, in which the amplitude decreases by a factor of 1 over E is 1 over Kc, which is square root 2 rho, rho over omega mu. For copper, this is for a frequency of 1 megahertz, 6.6 .6 10 to minus 5 meters, very small number. And this penetration depth varies as 1 over square root of f, which implies that the higher the frequency, the less will be the penetration into the conductor.